Good morning. This is Wisdom Wednesday number 16. And today's topic is From Disease to Purity. So we have a question. The question is, it became clear to me a few years back that I need to eat healthy to feel better. I have some digestion issues and it interferes with me moving forward in my life. You speak about the yoga diet and the yoga lifestyle. What does that entail? Well, that's a great question because that's my favorite topic. So I'm glad you asked it. Okay, so the purpose of the yoga diet and living the yoga lifestyle is really about paving a path for you to open up to living what your true nature is there available for you to, to live and to experience. It's really, it's if when you practice the yoga lifestyle and the yoga diet, things get easier for you. It's just easy and it's very um, energetic and exciting. So um, your true nature is already very, it's already pure. Um, when you begin to live and resonate with your true nature, um, you will get to experience what that is all the time day to day. So the question is now is that although this is in uh, your inherent natural state of mind and body and being, how come you can't experience it? What's stopping you from living that and experiencing it directly in your life? So you, you have a body and you also have thoughts, you also have emotions, and um, you have an ego. An ego is your sense of identification of who you are as an individual out there in this world. So all of these things, your body, your mind, your emotions, your ego, they're there to help you, serve you, live this life. But just like we need to clean out the car every now and again, or clean the oil, or we need to clean our house, or just like we need to take a bath every day and clean our external world, we also need to purify and clean our internal body and mind. So this is a, this is a fact that most people forget about. They're not connected to that. They think all they have to do is do the external and everything should be fine. But we have an internal world and that is actually more real than the external world. So when you don't purify yourself, if you don't clean out, um, what happens is the accumulated dross from years of bad habits, um, bad food, all this kind of stuff, start to accumulate. And what happens is it covers your true self. It covers the brilliance of your being. And it's natural, isn't it? Like, think about it. Um, if you don't clean a house, it starts to collect dirt and dust. And then it's very dusty when you try to clean it out. It gets uh, you can't breathe because it's too dusty. So we need to do that. So in yoga, we have a barometer go, to go by. A barometer meaning like something that you can observe and watch and make shifts and changes uh, according to the barometer. So in yoga, it's called the three gunas. G-U-N-A, guna. And a guna just means that the, the quality of life, there is 
it's divided into three qualities um, or three modes of, of living. So I'm going to explain these three modes so that you can benefit from uh, increasing uh, your life energy and uh, feeling better in life. So the first guna, which is the highest guna, is the guna called sattva. So sattva is um, the guna that brings light, brilliance, awareness, one-pointedness. Um, it creates a sense of enthusiasm. It's like the, the flower that's about to bloom. It, it, it just goes into its highest expression of, of itself. So when you uh, eat live food, natural foods, raw foods, um, simple foods, simple preparation of foods, uh, organic, um, then you are practicing sattvic, sattva. So it's sattvic foods. Um, when you practice sattvic diet or practice eating sattvic foods, then you are in the process of purifying your body. And you can just purify and purify until you experience more and more light and delight in your life. So you are setting the ground for more clear thinking and brilliance in your life when you practice sattvic diet. The next guna is the guna that distracts, um, like as I said earlier, your true nature is always present for you. It, it's available for you at all times and you can live happy and be, and be uh, living a state of um, happiness, brilliance, and ease and comfort. Um, it's always available for you. But these gunas can obscure or cover your true uh, self and you, therefore stopping you from experiencing it. So the next guna, rajas, R-A-J-A-S, is the guna that distracts your attention on that higher self that you are. So it, when you eat um, stimulating foods like sugar, chocolate, coffee, tea, um, certain drugs, um, uh, what else? Anything that stimulates uh, powerful spices. They overstimulate and make you kind of agitated uh, or very excited. Then these foods can keep you so busy and use up so much energy that you are losing the connection with your higher self. So um, you're, you're unable to be concentrated. You're unable to be focused in your life. Um, and um, you will naturally will lose your, the, the bliss and the calm that is available for you, but you're blocking it with too much rajas, too much stimulating foods. So that's rajas. The next guna is called tamas. And this one is the one that really covers everything up really thick. It's, uh, it's the feeling of heaviness, it's a downward spiral, it goes towards a depression. And foods that, um, that are tamasic food would be anything that is dead, that is dying, that is old, moldy, uh, burnt, um, indigestible, uh, maybe really bad combinations of foods. Um, what else? Um, yeah, well, anyway, any food that is in the process of dying, then that's called tamas. So when you eat heavy, indigestible, processed type foods, then what happens? You know what happens. You feel heavy. And there's a kind of a lethargy that happens after eating a full meal of tamasic food. 
And so naturally, it's going to take a long time for your energy to come back because all your energy is trying to di digest all this heavy, dead food. So what you want here is you want to start feeling good in your body. And um, the best way to do that is to start thinking about a clean, healthy diet, which you said that you realized a few years back that in order to feel better, you start have to eat, you have to eat better. Okay. So um, you need to eat better. You need a clean, simple, sattvic diet. The other thing you will need to do is do a cleanse. You'll need to do some, kind, some form of a fast that will help clean out all that accumulated dross from years and years and years of eating rajasic food and tamasic food. Because it's still sitting in your, in your body. It's still sitting in your intestines. So what happens now, even if you decided to eat good quality food now with lots of nutrients, uh, because your body's not cleaned out, there's a big wall or a, a big wall of, of sticky, gluey substance um, right next to, on your intestinal walls that prevents the blood to receive the nutrients through the capillaries. So there's this big wall. So what happens is this gluey, sticky substance is actually um, putting out toxins because it's just sitting there, just like if you were to be in a, in a house long enough that has never been cleaned, then there's all this yucky, gluey, yucky stuff. It's toxic. So you're, you are actually increasing through tamas, through tamasic food, you are getting yourself more sick. So this is the way to get sick, is to eat tamasic food, rajasic food, and um, the problem with that, of course, is that uh, it takes a lot of money, energy, time, and doctors to get yourself back to a state where you want to just feel good. So, um, you are what you eat, and that's, that's a principle in yoga. You are what you eat. So if you eat tamasic foods, you're going to feel heavy, you're going to feel depressed, you're going to feel sick, you're going to feel tired and very slowed down. If you eat rajasic foods, you're going to feel stimulated, maybe overstimulated, maybe too um, busy, um, overwhelmed. You're going to be confused, you'll get distracted. If you eat sattvic foods, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel easy. Your digestion will flow well. Um, you're going to feel vibrant and alive. And the thing about sattvic foods is that it takes no energy out of you to digest it. So you're not spending any time sort of in the digestion mode. You're always available for moving forward in your life, which is what you want to do. So there's infinite possibilities of waiting for you when you start to eat and live a more sattvic lifestyle. So here's a suggestion for you. Take out a notepad and on your notepad you're going to write down what you eat in one week. So on the left hand side of your notepad you will put down breakfast. So everything that you eat in one week for breakfast you're going to write it down and just List it one line after another. Same with lunch, snacks, supper, and drinks. You just make a list. Okay, I have oats, I have cereal, I have milk, I have fruit, and then down lunch I have, you know, whatever you eat. And then right on the right hand side, next to each food that you eat, you write down um, Tamas, rajas, sattva. Okay, no, this one must be more tamas. Okay, I thought it was healthy, but actually now, according to Miranda's description of the gunas, um, it's something, if it's dead, then it's tamas. It's not that helpful for me. So, that kind of thing. So, you, you write it all down, and then you look at your list 
and you check to see where the tummus and the rajas is and you look at the food that you've been eating and you just simply decide what's a more sattvic replacement for that food and you do that with everything on your list. This is the beginning of your purification process. When you practice this, when you implement sattva into your diet, you're just simply going to feel better. You're going to feel energetic and um, feel like your life is just full of new possibilities. Once you start implementing this into your physical uh, diet and your food, then you can start implementing the, the three gunas, tamas, rajas, and sattva, in your, um, the activities that you have in your life. So what, how do I spend my, my activities? Do I sit in front of a TV set uh, most of the time or whatever? So then that would be more tamas. If I'm sitting in front of a computer, it might be a little bit more rajasic because you're overstimulated with too much information. Uh, or do I sit and close my eyes and meditate? That would be more sattva. So this is an example of the types of activities. If you do yoga, it's more sattva. If you um, play rough sort of uh, games, then that would be more rajas. Um, so you, you, you think about what kind of activities that you have in life. And um, um, the types of thinking that you have. What kind of thoughts do you have? Do you have very depressing uh, um, thoughts that bring you down? Do you have thought that would be tamas? Do you have thinking that is like too fast? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to worry about this and worry about that? That's rajas. And or do you have thoughts that uh, lift you up? Do you read um, books that are inspiring for you? And that's sattva. So that's with your thinking, your activities, and then your company. What kind of company do you uh, keep. So we have um, um, company that drains your energy, that would be tamasic. Uh, company that um, oh, overstimulates you, you know, there's too much information going on, a lot of talking about this and that, gossip and this, blah, blah, blah. that's rajas. It's, 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 it's an, another way of obscuring your peaceful state of mind. Or are you inviting more uh, people that, re that relate well, that see you as, as a being, as a, as a soul, as opposed to a person who they can get something from or use you in some way, that they see you and honor you as your, your true self. That would be called Satwe Company. So, here we are. Once you start to implement these three gunas in your life and you understand the science behind it, Believe me, your life will turn around. This is called living a yoga lifestyle. So not only will you have a better digestion, but you'll uh, relate to the whole world in a way that will continually lift you so that you are more and more connected to the true self that you are inherently, that we all have the right to live because that's where we come from. So we need to remove all the dross that's blocking that connection to ourself. And the three gunas are a beautiful way to start practicing purification in our life. And so from, um, from disease and depression, we can move into that state of purity and possibility. So, thank you. For today's Wisdom Wednesday, and I will meet you next Wednesday for another Wisdom Wednesday. Bye for now.